Hello my good people and welcome to Le Grand Media. Today we are looking at how Raila Amolo Odinga relates to the Wanga community. Yes, you heard me right. How Raila Amolo Odinga relates to the Wanga and the larger Luya community. Yes, you've heard him in political gatherings say how he relates to the Luya community and it's actually true that Raila Amolo Odinga relates to the Luya community and the Luya community including the Luo community from which Raila comes. All of them come from Uganda. So let me give you this history so that you can understand. For those who have not watched my first uh, video about the Nabongo culture, I had indicated there that I wanted to explain to you the history of how Raila Amolodinga relates to the Luya community. But the administrator of the Nabongo Cultural Center called me and told me that I am requested not to take photographs of any artifacts or portraits of any other material on display in the museum. So the photos I wanted to use and the evidence I wanted to use is in the museum. So any publication of material displayed in that museum is strictly prohibited and illegal. So ninge waonyesha materials zote zenye ziko hapo ninge fungwa my friends. But there is enough evidence to indicate that Raila Amolo Dinga relates to the Luya community and the Luos and the Luyas of Western Kenya we originated from Uganda who originated from Egypt and uh, uh, Central and West Africa, Huko, Congo, Huko. So there is enough evidence to show that because the colonialists used to take those photos in black and white and all those photos are in the, are in the museum. So you will not have the opportunity to see all those photos. And I want to thank the administrator because when you visit the museum there is a fee that you pay and you get to see all those photos. The money that is collected there is used to maintain the museum and the entire cultural center so don't blame the administrator for not allowing me to display all these materials you can visit the Nabongo cultural center and see all those materials on, on display so let me not waste my, your time let me show you the history of how Raila Molo Dinga relates to the Luya community now we are starting with the Mwanga 3 Mwanga III was a king in Uganda. He was a prince in Uganda, okay? And you know prince, uh, the, the princess usually inherit the, the kingdom, okay? So he was a king. We can say Mwanga III was a king and he was in Uganda. So he had brothers who also wanted to take over the kingdom and he could not continue staying in Uganda. During that time, in pre-colonial periods, you, Kenya and Uganda were the same. We did not have this uh, demarcation nai boundaries zenye manaona atajui Kenya huku Uganda huku no Kenya and Uganda were the same okay so during that time um, Mwanga 3 left Uganda and came to Amaseno yeah near Kisumu at a place called Lela so remember this is a king in Uganda and he has had a conflict with his brother so he could not inherit the kingdom there so he came to a place called Lela where he established a kingdom this is Mwanga 3 okay so Mwanga 3 had several several sons you, you know this uh, these kings used to have many wives and many wives you gave birth to several children okay so Mwanga 3 had uh, several children and but i will not focus on all of them for example we had uh, Habiakala, we had Murono, we had Mutende, we had Wanga, we had Wamoi, we had Wehoba, we had Mugoya, we had Sakwa, okay? So I will not explain all those sons of Mwanga 3 because you'll get confused. I'm only focusing on two. I'm focusing on Wanga and I'm focusing on Sakwa, okay? I'm focusing on Wanga and I'm focusing on Sakwa, okay? So Mwanga 3 when he was at Lelania Kisumu in Maseno, he died there and he was buried there. So when he was buried and he had several sons, including Wanga and Sakwa, all of them could not inherit the kingdoms. And we had large tracts of land. So these guys could move and establish kingdoms in other places. Okay? So let us not focus on Sakwa. Let us focus on Wanga. Okay? So when Mwanga III died, and there was a conflict on who could inherit the kingdom, Wanga left. Yeah? Wanga left and came to a place called Tiriki. Okay? When he was in Tiriki, he was not comfortable there and he had to come to Matungu. Now, on his way to Matungu, Matungu is a trading center in uh, western Kenya, which I will show you later. So, when, on his way to Matungu, he rested at a place, a certain place where he called a ginger. A ginger, we have a ginger in Uganda, 
and he just lifted copied that name and called that place a jinja in, in what we call now western kenya remember as i told you we did not have any boundary okay we didn't have any boundary so he called that place a jinja in in uganda we have a place called jinja now i have started to give you evidence to show that a jinja and a jinja in kenya and jinja in uganda are all related and these places were named by wanga the son of mwanga three okay so when he was at a jinja he rested quite a bit and then he came to matungu where he rested yeah he now established a large kingdom ranging from jinja in uganda all the way to naivasha okay so uh, the, the wanga kingdom which was headed by wanga ilitoka huko e jinja uganda all the way to naivasha and you remember in 1976 when idi amin used to say that uh, uganda uh, ilikuwa inaenda mpaka naivasha and wale uh, wamkwa mmezaliwa i was not born at that time karibu kukuwa na war between jomo kenyatta and idi amin because idi amin was claiming part of kenya because of wanga okay so wanga died in 11 40. You know this was a long time ago during the pre-colonial periods. So our actually what a picture. So Wanga the son of Mwanga 3 died in 1140 and he was buried at he was buried at Matungu, okay? So this Wanga had several sons and I will not I will not discuss those several sons. We had Murono, we had Baija, we had Muniafu, but and we had uh, Wabala. So I will oh, I will only focus on Wabala, okay? So Wabala inherited from inherited the kingdom from Wanga and we had several other kings from you know that that was long time ago in 1150 my friend so we had several other kings that inherited the kingdom such as Chibuire, Musinda, Lochite, Chinetia, Usundwa, Wamukoya and then we came to Shiwundu now Shiwundu gave birth to Nabongo Mumia okay Nabongo Mumia okay so Nabongo Mumia is now the the one who maintained the kingdom he had a very strong kingdom yeah he was actually the first man to ride a bicycle this man collaborated with the british and he had a lot of power okay so nabongo mumia gave birth to shitawa when he died okay he gave birth to shitawa sasa hii wanga yenye mnajua saa hii mumia sijui nini mumia was named after nabongo mumia then we had he gave birth to shitawa who later died and his son called nabongo mumia too who is alive currently yeah and your king sai okay he inherited from his father shitawa now let's go back to mwanga 3 who was the great grandfather okay I, as i had told you he gave birth to wanga who gave birth to wabala mwenyaliza shiundu mwenyaliza na bongomia kaza so this wanga who is the son of mwanga 3 was the brother to sakwa all of them were born at lela in kisumu near maseno okay so sakwa remained there and uh, back to matara who later died and he, he, he was inherited by nyibinya omolo ogola and several other kings that came down there from 10 feet from the first century huko nyuma huko okay now in that genealogy where well, we had rapondi who gave birth to raila not the current raila the initial raila mwenyewe the original raila we now have photos of that raila the first raila odinga the first raila okay now raila gave birth to odinga not odinga his father we had another odinga and we have photos of the colonialist who came and took those photos now that odinga is the one who gave birth to oginga jaramogi oginga odinga okay now jaramogi oginga odinga when he died he gave birth to raila who is the current raila now so when you hear raila odinga says that he is the 13th grand child of wanga actually that is true because his great great grandfather who is called sakwa was the brother of wanga and both of them were children of mwanga 3 who originated from uganda so when you see our wajaluo wote au siaya wa wajaluo siaya na waluya wa western hapa na wawanga wote sisi wote tulitoka Uganda in the year 10 10 something all of us were not here all this was a, western kenya was a bush hii yote ilikuwa bush sisi wote tulikuwa Uganda huko okay now that is how raila odinga relates to 
relates to the Wanga community. Actually, we have a relationship. Okay? So I've explained to you and that is how Raila Odinga now relates to the Luya community. And uh, as you can see, this beautiful cultural center was built in 2008 by the Mumias Sugar Company. Yeah? During that time, Mumias Sugar Company had a lot of money and it came here and it uh, built this place. And it, on my channel, you can see a video on Mumias Sugar Company, how it rose and how it fell. Now that it fell, we don't have a source of money that can help to support this place. Okay, The company was doing a good job, but now that we don't have enough money to support this place, kindly come, visit the museum, pay something small so that that money can be used to maintain this place and pay the workers and preserve the history of the Luya community and the history of the Luo community na sasa hii inaonyesha kwamba waluya na wajaluo sisi wote ni watoto wa nyumba moja na tumetoka wote Uganda and we originated from Congo and Egypt yeah so thank you for listening to me let's meet in the next video